Welcome to Intro Dynamics BME 110B. This is the first lecture. Now the very basic equation, equation of dynamics is F equals MA. This is sometimes better written uh, with the vectors. The, the sum of all the forces, we'll write it this way, the sum of all the forces the vector forces is equal to the mass times the acceleration vector. In some situations, when the acceleration is zero, this is vastly simplified, and we could just write that the, the sum of all the forces is equal to zero. And in fact, this is what's known as statics, and what you studied in BME 110A. So, in 110B, we'll be dealing with cases <clears throat> when the, acce the acceleration is not equal to zero. This is called dynamics, and this is what we'll be studying in 110B. Now, you can write this in different ways, and here I've written it out as the acceleration vector is equal to the time derivative of the velocity vector with respect to time <coughs> and then the velocity vector is equal to the the time derivative of the position vector and so we could write it this way the acceleration is equal to the second derivative of the x position vector with respect to time and correspondingly a shorthand notation this way the acceleration is equal to the time derivative of v that's this single dot here indicates a time derivative. A double dot is equal to indicates a second derivative. And so we can write it overall the equation F equals MA this way is that the sum or of all the forces here I've just got the F um, vector and the forces are a, a, a function of the position of a particle and the time is equal to the second derivative with respect to time of the mass times the position vector. So this is the fundamental equation of this class. There are different strategies for solving the equation. Uh, let's so first I've rewritten it here is the sum of the forces is equal to the mass times the uh, position vector, the second derivative of the position vector, that's those x's up there. And again, here's another way to write it, uh, as the sum of the forces is equal to the time derivative of the linear momentum, so that's L vector with the dot above it, and here's um, the linear momentum is equal to the mass times the velocity. <coughs> here's two examples of simplifications. Um, in general, this is, can only be solved by a computer. So this second order differential equation needs a computational solution. We'll do a bit of that in class, but we'll also be studying many situations where this can be simplified and solved analytically. So the first example here is statics, which I already mentioned and you, you spent all last quarter doing. The second example is one we'll cover in detail, and that's when the sum of all the forces is equal to a constant. In a typical case, that constant is gravity, and it's equal to the mass times g, the acceleration due to gravity. Now this class will require an extensive use of vectors and coordinate systems. You must remember that the coordinate system must be fixed so that this, this equation, the sum of all the forces, is equal to the mass times the acceleration, so that this remains true. One can construct a coordinate system that's not fixed, and if you do so and you measure the sum of all the forces and the accelerations, they will not be equal. Sometimes it's advantageous to construct such a coordinate system and solve the equation in there. And in, in those cases, we would have to add a second acceleration that's apparent due to the rotation of the coordinate system.
One example of this is to solve the, this equation in a rotating frame of reference, such as on the surface of the Earth. When you have large-scale motion, you get a, kind of an anomalous acceleration that goes by the name of the Coriolis acceleration or the Coriolis force. And that's because the, the coordinate system is not fixed. Now we'll do a lot of manipulation of vectors in this class. And so just to uh, recall the very basics of that, we can write a position vector like this. X is the position vector, and that could equal some scalar A in the X hat direction plus another scalar, and we're going to call that B in the y hat direction plus an, a third scalar of course we'll call that c in the z hat direction so this is the rectilinear system that's the rectilinear coordinate system and it can describe uh, <coughs> it's a simple system for describing a vector now a second case, <coughs> we could write the same position vector here in this way, where I'm going to write it with different scalars, d in the r hat direction, plus e the theta hat direction plus f in a phi direction. And this we'll call the radial system of coordinates. But the point here is that in both cases we have the same position vector x. This is one way of writing it. Here's a second way of writing it. And there's many different ways of writing it, but it's always going to be the same position vector. Now, another way to solve the equation is sometimes to just to avoid it. And so sometimes we can avoid calculating the force simply here, the, the force, the vector force here, simply by calculating energy. And so these are related often through a simple relationship. The work is the force times the distance. And the energy should be conserved. Let's get rid of that P there. I don't know what that's doing there. Apparently you can't get rid of that P. Okay, I got rid of that P. Here's an example where if we have some surface and we've got a particle, we can just measure changes in the height of the particle. Call that delta H. Let's see. We'll, we'll measure changes in the energy of the particle just by measuring changes in the height of the particle. So the changes in the energy is equal to the mass times the gravitational constant times the change in the height and we could describe perhaps we could describe the motion of the particle in terms of energy change rather than in, in terms of force changes. Now up to this point, we've only considered point particles. <coughs> Later in the course, we will be considering systems of particles. And things will get more complicated.
in that case, we'll, we'll talk about different problems, like effective forces, different methods of solving these equations. So effective forces, the center of mass, and even a little bit about fluids. So fluids are the ultimate systems of particles. And perhaps get right down at least and think about the Navier-Stokes equation. From there we'll move into look at rigid bodies so rigid bodies oh let's see initially we're talking about just point bodies and when you talk about rigid bodies you have to talk about rotation so we'll talk about things like translation so just the the body the body moving we'll talk about rotation of the body and in fact, any motion of a rigid body can be described as a combination of translation and rotation. We will also talk about these other topics, and I'll just write them down here. General plane motion. And the example is of a rolling wheel. We'll talk about the concept of angular momentum. And how that might be used or misused. And then we'll deal with different ways of solving that F equals MA equation using what's called energy and momentum methods. And again, these are all tricks to solve F equals MA, that second order differential equation, because remember, the force is equal to the mass times the second derivative of the position vector. And the whole goal is just to determine the path of the object. So these energy and momentum methods are methods of solving that second order differential equation. We'll also touch near the end of the course on vibrations. Now vibrations is a very important field and it, and it deals with really the stability of statics. So if you have statics, uh, let me write that down here. So if you have a static structure, what happens when you slightly displace it? Well, of course it moves and it, and it, and it begins to, re hopefully begins to go back to where it came from. <coughs> and that's a vibration. So this, let's see, so we've got the very simplest type of vibration is called a simple harmonic motion. We'll deal with pendulums. Force vibrations. And with damped vibrations. So that's the very basic outline of the course. Um, we'll, we'll start with 
let's see if I can get all the way back up here and maybe even shrink this down and look at this okay again we'll start with um, different methods of solving f equals ma for particles then we'll start dealing with systems of particles including effective forces the center of mass we'll deal a little with fluids and then move on to rigid bodies general plane motion angular momentum energy and momentum methods vibrations and the stability of statically built structures um, and then the subtopics in vibrations there are simple harmonic motion pendulums force vibrations and damped vibration that's it for today and next time join me as we start looking in detail at rectilinear motion